Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Michigan Realtors Government Affairs Update. I'm Brad Ward. And I'm Brian Westron. Welcome to 2024. Uh, as we start off this legislative year, the second half of our legislative session, uh, the makeup of the Michigan House of Representatives is a little bit different than we last left it, um, which is going to make for kind of an interesting first quarter of this year. Um, as uh, the session started out last year, the House Democratic Caucus held a 56-54 majority. Uh, that majority is now a 54-54 even-up split uh, after two Democratic state representatives were successful in November on winning uh, elections for their local mayoral races. Uh, so I know that uh, you know the House Republicans are interested in trying to strike a deal uh, for some sort of shared power agreement. Uh, I don't know if that's going to come under the House rules. The Democratic uh, majority gets to uh, hold on to the gavels uh, and the majorities on the committees. Um, it's just that anything going through the floor is a 54-54 split, requires 55 votes, which means uh, there's going to be a lot of opportunities to work together between Republicans and Democrats in this uh, in this first part of the year. But committees started meeting this week, and uh, one of the committees that met was House Judiciary, and they brought up a uniform partition of heirs' property, which is a, uh, an issue that we made part of our legislative priorities for this session. That's correct, Brad. And we, uh, we, we talk about that bill as the uh, Uniform Partition of Heirs Property Act, but it's also House Bill 4924, sponsored by Representative Emily Devendorf. And uh, a big part of uh, the rationale for why this is being pursued around the country is uh, largely due to a lack of um, consistent estate planning. So obviously we know um, good, strong estate planning often uh, will contemplate what occurs when um, a, a, a large property owner passes away and does not have a plan for how that property is going to be dis disposed of or passed down to uh, generations and future generations. Uh, but what this bill would do is for those instances where state planning has not occurred, uh, it will lay out a framework and quite frankly, place it within the purview of the courts uh, to determine whether or not it is in fact heirs property. And also the type of notice and the type of uh, uh, parameters around which disposition can occur. Uh, because a big issue that we were seeing certainly around the country is is where they did not have a uniform uh, partition process that did take into account all of the interests of the the tenants in common ten, tenants in common in this instance uh, there was a problem where people were not aware that their interests were being essentially vacated um, and uh, this would provide the protections uh, and also the notice requirements but also make sure that um, we do place that heavy emphasis on on estate planning and making sure that people are thinking about these uh, these very important decisions that will impact generations down the line. Yeah, really protecting generational wealth and, and giving due process to uh, all of those people that would be subject to the partition process. Um, you know, we, you hear horror stories of people who have taken advantage of folks and and and, and become predatory and selling this land out from under the ears. Uh, so really trying to put in that those protections, as you point out. Uh, the other two committees that we monitored uh, this week, we had some legislation that we're, we're looking at um, with regard to the renovation repair and painting program. This is dealing with lead paints currently overseen by the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, advocates for this bill say that the EPA has really done nothing to enforce. Um, and so they are hoping that Michigan, like a handful of other states, uh, will kind of step into that role where the EPA hasn't been uh, enforcing the RPP rules uh, and, and take that over from the federal government. Uh, the other one that's probably a little bit more concerning is um, a bill that would repeal the current rulemaking limitations on EGLE, uh, formerly the, the DEQ, uh, the Environmental Protection uh, Wing of Michigan government here. Um, they have been limited in terms of their rulemaking authority under Part 31 for over 20 years now. Uh, and there's legislation that would seek to kind of uh, untie the hands of EGLE where they could become more aggressive in terms of uh, permitting and, and things like that, uh, especially on, on under Part 31, which deals uh, with water. 
so we're going to continue to update you on those bills and on those issues. The Public Policy Committee will be meeting for the first time this year in a few weeks uh, and have those kind of front and center uh, for them. But probably one of the more concerning uh, things we have, and Brian, as we've gone through uh, the legislative process, one of our uh, big pushes has been we need more inventory, right? Uh, and so now uh, our friends at the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, MISHTA, uh, are proposing to increase the real estate transfer tax in order to, to, to fund affordable housing development. Um, Seems fairly counterintuitive. Making all property, including housing, more expensive to create affordability uh, does seem very counterintuitive. Really, what we're talking about is a $50 million tax increase on not just housing, but all real estate. Um, you know, in a time that we already have interest rates that are, uh, you know, freezing people into their homes, a uh, time when under proposed lay people may have lived in there for an extended period of time and have lower property taxes. Now we're talking about increasing uh, the real estate transfer tax. You're really taking away uh, an incentive to create inventory out of our existing housing stock. Um, not to mention the cost that this would put on large commercial development like multifamily housing, which is so needed, um, at a time when, when the state really can't bear it. So, um, not to mention, this has absolutely nothing to do with addressing the costs of housing development, which are usually driven by local regulations and local zoning. So extremely concerning. We want you as the members to know we've been out meeting with legislators, letting them know that this is uh, a line that this association cannot cross in terms of uh, increasing the real estate transfer tax. Uh, watch for coming news, maybe a call for action uh, coming up very soon, but um, definitely something that we want to put on your radar as uh, we're putting it on the radar of all the state legislators right now um, as we begin 2024. Absolutely. So, with that, uh, that's how it looks from here in Lansing. My name is Brad Ward. And I'm Brian Westron. Thank you very much for tuning in.